the um, information from the Latino side, but now, how about our GOP leadership? And we looked at having certain particular people involved in, in this panel. And before we introduce the panelists, I was struck by um, our first presenter um, several years ago. It was at the, the um, state conference when we um, endorsed uh, Tom Emmer for governor. And Rich Stanick had a chance to talk to the audience. It's a big turnout. Here's a successful politician, successful sheriff. What did he talk about for 15 minutes? He talked about reaching out to minorities. That's what he talked about. And I sat there and listened to his message. And it's a great message. Did everyone else listen? I'm not sure. But I know I did, and I thought this is a great way to start this panel. And I want to um, introduce uh, Rich Stanick. He's the 27th Sheriff of Hennepin County. He's, um, he's serving the second term in Minnesota's largest county, 1.3 million residents. He was first sworn in on January 1st, 2007, and was reelected in 2010. I'm not going to give you all the rest of it, but let's have a hand for Sheriff Rich Stanley. Hey, uh, thanks for having me here this, uh, I guess what is now uh, late morning, right? Good, good. Hey, uh, as you said, my name's Rich Stanley. I'm the Sheriff of Hennepin County, so I'm a little bit out of my jurisdiction. Uh, that's okay. I usually get a, a permit from uh, Sheriff Oster to come over to Ramsey. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm the Sheriff for all people. And I meant, uh, I meant what he just said, which is I believe that uh, the key to uh, successful election, particularly for the Republican Party, is reaching out to the different divergent communities. Now, how many of you are from Hennepin County? Quite a few, huh? So how many, uh, you know, how many Latinos live in Hennepin County? 67,000? According to who? Ah, CD5, not Hennepin County. All right. Uh, so. Uh, Look, there are probably uh, as low as 80, maybe 100 plus Somalis that live in Hennepin County. Um, thousand, 100,000. There are probably uh, close to maybe 200,000 Latinos that live across Minnesota, right? Uh, primarily in the metropolitan area, primarily Hennepin and Ramsey counties. Uh, as a sheriff of a county of about 1.3 million, uh, I get a big job to do every day. Um, and so we represent all folks, Caucasians and African Americans and Latinos, Hispanic, Somali, you know, East African, Kenyan, uh, you name it. It really runs the, uh, the gamut. I thought that uh, how I could best uh, talk to you for five minutes is a little bit about what we do at the Sheriff's Office in terms of our community outreach. Because my job depends on community outreach. And my job is providing public safety countywide. And I can't do that unless the citizens of my county, the residents there, uh, feel safe and secure. Safe and secure to contact law enforcement, but also safe and secure in their communities. And so we make it pretty easy. It's something that I've harped on with the Republican leadership of this party for years. Uh, he's right, I had a chance uh, a couple years ago to talk at the uh, state convention. And instead of spending my time talking about other platitudes, I talked about voter outreach, primarily with the divergent communities, the Latino community in particular. Now I know that uh, uh, that if we're able to do that, uh, that it will bring uh, good things to the Republican Party. Uh, I don't care whether people, you know, start out as Republican, Democrat, uh, somewhere in between. I believe that this party is built on some core fundamental principles and values, and that resonates with people. And so, in the Sheriff's Office, I've got a community engagement team, community outreach, much like I hope the party establishes and sustains long term. It doesn't begin overnight. You can't come into a community six months before an election or 12 months before an election and say, hey, uh, I'm here to help and I'm the uh, state Republican Party. And forgive me, uh, Keith and others, if you're still in the room, uh, this is not meant to be critical of the party or the leadership, but rather just some straight talk from the sheriff, all right? <laughs> I think they call 
call it uh, shooting straight with Sheriff Stan. <laughs> Makes for great tough water. No, but I believe that you know these are long trusting relationships built on a mutual respect, uh, built on a mutual understanding of what is important to the community as a, a whole. And so my community engagement team aren't made up of Caucasian deputy sheriffs. They are made up of Latino, Hispanic background deputy sheriffs. And the same thing with the Somali community and the African American community in the Hmong and East Asian community. They reflect the communities in which we serve. Now, secondly, uh, they're out there at all the different events. It doesn't matter whether it's a daytime event, a vigil because someone was killed or died. It doesn't matter whether it's a community or a civic festival on the weekend or a holiday. Uh, we bring them in for uh, what we call Citizens Law Enforcement Academies. The traditional one is 10 weeks long. Well, some people can't spend 10 weeks every Wednesday night for three and a half hours. So on a Saturday morning, we'll get together for four or five hours and talk to them about what's important in terms of public safety. What is the American criminal justice system? How does the sheriff's office work with local law enforcement? You can see where the parallels would be with the Republican Party, the voter outreach, the basic civics lesson, and the, uh, the activist support about what you might want them to do or how they could help you, correct? You can see the parallels? Um, and I, I don't believe it's, it's much uh, different than that. Uh, we talk about, look, um, like I said, my community is 1.3 million residents. Uh, that's my base. Uh, let's just say that uh, 800 plus thousand are Caucasians. Well, that means uh, half a million are divergent communities. We translate our information into different languages. I make it easy for them. Don't make it hard. Don't make obstacles and roadblocks. This is really easy to do. If I go out to a community group, and I wasn't sure what to expect today. I wasn't sure if it was going to be uh, Latinos who did not speak English or spoke uh, parts of English, and I need an interpreter, but that's not uncommon for me to go out to these community groups where they do not speak English and to be able to have somebody to translate a very basic, simple message, but also provide the written materials or if we use a PowerPoint or a video to do it in their language, make them feel comfortable. We're about service to them, not unlike what this party is to the voters and the residents and the citizens of this great state, right? So that's my real simple message and I will work hard. I've met with every single one of the candidates for governor on the Republican side, minus one candidate for the U.S. Senate uh, on the Republican side, but I'll be meeting with him uh, shortly. My message to him has been the same. I'm not looking for anything from any one of them. I want them to understand about public safety in our communities. I want them to understand about outreach to the divergent communities not just in my county, but across the metropolitan and the state of Minnesota, which is why I think you're all here today, right? How do you do that? How do you get that grassroots support? How do you motivate uh, the different folks to be able to do it? It's really easy, and I'm happy to uh, help them uh, do that. And I will use all the resources available to me, the knowledge I've gained, the contacts I have in the community, to help the Republican Party do that if they wish. But they got to ask. I'm not going to force what we do upon anyone. I won't do that, right, Randy? Right. You've known me for a long time, and Rhonda in the back, and I know other candidates have come and gone, and maybe we'll be here later in the afternoon. Um, again, what you get with me is straight talk from the sheriff. No bullshit in between, right? <laughs> so where it's always been. So with that, I'll leave it to you. I look forward to the panel. If I can be of assistance to you, whether it's about this or public safety issues, whether you're in my county, out of my county, it really doesn't matter. You get, pick up the phone and give me a call. You know my number? I know, you think it's 911, don't you? It's not. <laughs> You'll eventually get me to call 911, but that's the roundabout way. You call me direct at 612-348-2347. And I'll make it easy for you with my email. It's rich at sheriffstanick.com. But you gotta spell sheriff right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, we heard it from the man, the sheriff. Okay.